Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. Today I came to explain the very important topic from the functions so that is uh, domain and range of the functions. Okay. Yes, it is very important for IPE board exams and not only for that, for all competitive exams, MSET and mains. Okay. So, first of all, let me explain about the domain of the functions. Okay. So, before going to that, first of all, I am going to explain that throughout the chapter, we are going to discussing about that f is any real function. We are going to discussing about the real functions. First of all, what are real functions? So, f is any function which is defined from a to b. So, generally a is called the domain and b is the codomain, b is the codomain, right. So, now both domain and codomain are real numbers, both codomain and domain are belongs to the real numbers, then those type of functions are called real functions, ok. Yes, so throughout the chapter generally we are going to discussing about that real functions, ok. Yes, now coming to our topic is uh, domain of a function, yes, what is domain of a function? So, let us see. Yes, what is domain? Yes, for that particular function, so the set of values of x, right, the set of values of x, so for which the function f of x can be defined, okay, yes. So, please observe this one where I am focusing the points, the set of values of x for which the f of x can be defined. Okay, nice. So, we are going to take that one function where the function can be defined for which values of x it can be defined. The set of values is called domain of the function. Okay. Let us see. So, I will give the clear explanation by taking one example. Suppose let f of x is 1 by x. Yes, now we got that immediately idea where the function can be defined. Okay. So, here this can be defined immediately we will get this one which is in the form of p by q. So, denominator is not equal to 0 immediately you write the condition yes, yes when x not equal to 0 then only it can be defined am I right or not? Okay. Yes. So, f of x is equal to 1 by x where it can be defined when x is not equal to 0 then it can be defined that means except x is equal to 0 it can be defined. So, then what do you say? Yes, this can be defined. Yes, f of x can be defined. So, so for all x belongs to natural number except 0. So, I can write minus a set of 0, right. Then what do you say? The domain of the function is all the real numbers except 0. Here the very important thing is. So, domain means the set of values of where the function can be defined, okay. Here the one more important thing is actually. Uh, we are focusing on that the set of values of x where the function can be defined. Okay. In addition to that, we are focusing one more point where the function cannot be defined, where the function cannot be defined. We are focusing that particular point also. Yes. So, we should find that type of points and those uh, points are removing from the set of real numbers. We will get that the domain of the functions. So, please keep in mind where the function can be defined that is very important. Of course, at the same time where the function cannot be defined that is also very important thing. Okay, not? So, yes, let us see that is about the domain of the functions. Now, I will give that some basic functions okay, where the functions are defined. Okay, not? Yes, let us see. Yeah, students. So, let us discuss uh, some functions uh, and what about their domains. Okay, first I am going to be discussing about this so, polynomial function. Okay, polynomial function. Let us take let f of x is any polynomial. This is a naught x power n plus a one x power n minus one plus and so on a n. So where a naught a one a two and so on a n are real numbers constants. Where n is any non-negative integer. Yes or not? So n is any non negative integer okay yes then it is an polynomial function yes f of x is any polynomial whatever it is the degree is any non negative integer yes where it can be defined yes so then i can say it can be defined for all x belongs to real numbers for all x belongs to real numbers it can be defined am i right or not okay yes 
Yes, what is the domain of the polynomial function? What is the domain of the polynomial function? It can be defined for all x belongs to real number. Okay, not? Yes. Then of those uh, algebraic functions, then I am going to be discussing about this one, one more thing. Rational function. First of all, what is rational function? Yes, a function f of x which is in the form of p of x by q of x. So, where q of x is not equals to 0. Right or not? So, the function which is in the form of f of x is p of x by q of x where q of x is not equal to 0 is called a rational function. Okay. Then what is the domain of this function? Here clearly I mentioned this one. Okay. So, it is a rational function. What is the domain of the rational function? Okay, here I can write like this x such that the set of values of x such that where the g of x is not equals to 0, am I right or not? Where the denominator function is not equals to 0, then that particular set of values of x is the domain of this function. Right or not? Please observe this one, what the process, how I am going to approach this one, where it can be defined. At the same time, please observe this one, where it cannot be defined those set of values are removing from that real number set. Okay. So, please observe this one rational function. Okay, not? Yeah, and coming to this one irrational function. Irrational function, it may be square root or it may be cube root. So, here for this thing is the very important thing. Yes. So, f of x is okay, it is a square root of p of x or fourth root of p of x or sixth root of p of x whatever it is. So, it is the eventh root of even root of f of x then the p of x must be then p of x must be greater than or equals to 0 am I right or not. So, when p of x is the even root of the function. Okay, yeah, when f of x is even root of the function, then in that case where it can be defined the value under even root, the value under even root that must be always greater than or equals to 0, it is never negative, then only this function can be defined. Okay, not? Yes. So, for odd roots, it can be defined, there is no problem, right or not? Okay. So, please observe this one rational function and irrational function, what about the domain of the functions? Of course, yeah, we will discuss uh, some problems, then you will get a clear idea what about the domain of the rational function and what about the domain of the irrational function. Okay. Yes, come on. So, uh, let us see some problems or some functions uh, discussing what is the domain of that function, particularly transcendental functions. Yes, let us see what are transcendental functions. Okay. Yes. So, just wait. So, what are transcendental functions? Transcendental functions means, so which are not algebraic functions. Okay. So, which are not algebraic functions, so they are called transcendental functions. Let us say what those are all. So, of those one of the thing is the logarithmic functions. Okay. So, logarithmic functions are called transcendental functions and the second one is the exponential functions. Okay. So, exponential functions and the third one is the trigonometric functions. Okay, trigonometric functions and the next one is the inverse trigonometric functions. Yes, they are called the transcendental functions. Yes, so for those transcendental functions, what about the domain where they are going to define? Okay, yes, let me explain this one. So, f of x equals to log x, f of x is equals to logarithm of a to the base b. Yes, or else log x to the base a, no problem. Let us take this one log x to the base a. So, where the logarithmic function can be defined, okay. Or, or see, we are clearly, I can write this one logarithm of f of x to the base a. Yes, this is the function logarithmic function. So, where the function can be defined is the so the function which is associated with the logarithm. What is that? The function which is associated with the logarithm that must be positive. Why? Because logarithms are can be defined only for positive real numbers. Am I right or not? So, here what can you say the condition? Here f of x should be greater than 0. Am I right or not? f of x should be greater than 0. Then what about the conditions for the base? 
बेस इज ग्रेटर दैन जीरो एंड बेस इज नाट ईक्वल टू वन ये दीज आर आल दि कंडीशन फॉर एक्सिस्टिंग द लागरदेमिक फंक्षन ये वट दोज आर आल दि सो एफ आफ एक्स इज ईक्व लाग एक्स टू द बेस ए आर लागरदेम आफ वन फंक्षन टू द बेस ए right and so what are the conditions the function which is associated with the logarithm must be positive right and the base third conditions for the base base is positive and the base is not equals to 1 then the logarithm function can be defined okay right yes so this the according to this condition we will get that the domain of that logarithmic function okay so here this one what can you write this one suppose f of x is equal log x to the base here. what is the domain is so clearly x is a positive real number okay next yes coming to this one so f of x is equals to e power x or a power x where a is greater than 0 <coughs> yes sir a is greater than 0. what do you say the function is where it can be defined for any value of x a value some greater than 0 2 power x or 5 power x so we can take any value of x it can be defined there is no problem for that okay not so for this function what do you say the domain is x belongs to the real number okay not so for this exponential functions yes and particularly coming to this uh, trigonometric functions and inverse trigonometric functions okay yes let us see so trigonometric functions so what is the domain of a sin x and cos x okay so these two functions are defined okay these two functions are defined on real numbers okay then so for the set of all the real numbers so sin x and cos x can be defined okay then what about these two functions tan x and secant x so it can be defined so for all the real numbers okay not except except okay not so, so for all the values of except uh, the odd multiples of pi by 2 am i right or not except odd multiples of pi by 2 okay that why because cos 90 cos of odd multiples of pi by 2 it becomes 90 so secant is 1 by cos so tan x is sin x by cos x okay yeah for those values so these functions are not defined that's why those values are removing that okay then what about these functions cot x okay and cosecant x are defined so for all the real numbers except n pi okay not except n pi so why it is cot is cos by sin cosecant is 1 by sin so sin becomes zero yet for all x belongs to n pi where n is any integer right or not so except those values these functions can be defined so that is about that the domain of the trigonometric function sin cos tan cot secant cosecant okay next yes coming to this one inverse trigonometry so what is the domain of sin inverse of x and cos inverse of x okay yes where x lies between minus 1 to plus 1 okay x belongs to minus 1 to plus 1 right and yeah how can i say it one is the because of uh, already we discussed about that functions when the inverse function will exist the function is bijection then only inverse will exist so actually okay. sin x and cos x are defined on the real numbers okay but inverse will exist when the inverse will exist when the function is a bijection then only inverse will exist am i right or not okay but where the sin and cos are uh, bijective functions okay on that real numbers okay yes in that case uh, the sin x and cos x so where if you are going to draw the graph minus pi by 2 2 plus pi by 2 it is minus 1 sin x graph i am going to this one okay plus 1 you will get like this okay not so in this case only it is both 1 1 and r2 then you will get this bijection okay then inverse will exist so in this interval minus pi by 2 plus pi by 2 only the sin x function is bijective function right or not okay so in that interval only the inverse will exist so at that case so the values are minus 1 to plus 1 okay right so so what is the domain of this sin inverse of x and cos inverse of x lies between minus 1 to plus 1 right or not so, yes then tan inverse of x and cot inverse of x so they are defined for all x belongs to real numbers okay not and the next thing is the secant inverse of x and cosecant inverse of x 
correct second inverse of x and cosecant inverse of x so they are defined when x less than or equals to minus 1 x greater than or equals to 1 okay yeah these are all the some basic functions where the functions can be defined okay right. come on students have a look and let us discuss uh, some more functions some different functions we are going to discussing what about their domains okay come on make a note yes so let us discuss uh, some more functions yes modulus of a function modulus of a function okay yes let us define this f of x is equals to modulus of x yes what is the definition of a modulus of x so yes modulus of x is x when x is greater than or equals to 0 it is equals to minus x when x is less than 0 am i right or not when x is less than 0 it is minus of the negative value okay not so so we can say this one modulus of x is never negative so then where it can define where it can define for all values of x right or not so what is the domain of the modulus function is you can take any real number then it will exist that is about the modulus of a function definition and the domain its a domain okay then we afterwards we'll discuss about the range okay yes so then the next one is the greatest integer function we can call it as a step function also step function right so f of x you can write like this f of x is equals to step of x which gives integer integral function also we can call it as a integral function okay next so suppose where n and n plus 1 are any integers n less than or equals to x less than n plus 1 then step of x which gives n this is the definition of uh, the greatest integer function yes step function while going to draw the graph you will get the graph like steps that is why it is called a step function ok you can write like this uh, integral function also why because it gives integer ok which type of integer which is nearer to that value of x which is less than the value of x ok not yeah I can define like this also <coughs> n and n plus 1 are any two integers ok if x lies between n to n plus 1 including n excluding n plus 1 so it is a step of x value gives n ok not? that is the definition of a greatest integer function yes so what is that where the function can be defined what is the domain of that function yes for this one is x belongs to r you can take any value of x but it gives that only integer ok anyway first we are discussing about that domain so x belongs to real number ok yes similarly one more function is there least to integer function yes f of x is equals to just like this brackets please observe the brackets it is like a closed bracket is like open brackets right so least to integer function ok for this also we can take any value of x x belongs to r yes and one more function is there fractional part of x right so fractional part of x so we can define like this f of x is equals to fractional part of x it can be defined like this x minus step of x x minus step of x which gives that the fractional part of x okay step of x is the integral part okay in a number integral part and the remaining part is there that is the fractional part so it can denote by like this yes so for this also we can define for any real number then the fractional part of x can be defined okay so uh, this is about that uh, some basic functions okay not? they are uh, what about the basic functions and uh, when they are defined on which interval they are going to define this one okay based on this information we are going to solving some particular problems let us see very important yes so before going to solving the problems we should follow some rules for solving the problems for getting the domain of a particular functions okay yes so the, it may helps for solving the problem yes what are those of those the first thing is x minus alpha into x minus beta less than or equals to 0 right and quadratic equation factorization x minus alpha into x minus beta less than 0 the solution set is x belongs to closed interval alpha and beta suppose that where alpha less than beta 
okay yes the product of the two factors less than or equal to zero then we can say x value lies between the two roots alpha and beta less than or equals to is there yes that means including that the roots alpha and beta suppose if it is only less than zero suppose if you got like this x minus alpha into x minus beta is less than zero simply you can write x belongs to open interval alpha beta yes so coming to the second one x minus alpha into x minus beta is greater than or equals to 0 then i can write x less than or equals to alpha x greater than or equals to beta yes here so please observe these two x minus alpha and x minus beta less than or equals to 0 i can say the solution set is lies in between the roots alpha and beta including alpha and beta right exactly the opposite of this one product of two factors is greater than or equal to 0 then x value does not lie between alpha and beta does not lie between alpha and beta that means less than alpha and greater than beta like this so okay i'll write in the interval formation this can be written as x belongs to minus infinity to alpha including union beta to infinity right and so please observe this one intervals okay here including alpha it's closed interval suppose the same thing so they have given that like this x minus alpha and x minus beta just greater than 0 here you will get that so open intervals open intervals you can get okay yes and one more important thing is coming to the modulus modulus of x less than or equals to k of course here k is positive very important thing is modulus of x is less than or equals to k then how can you expand so x value lies between minus k less than x less than plus k modulus of x is less than k so in positive value then the solution set is x lies between minus k to plus k okay yes the same thing modulus of x greater than k of course k is any positive number okay then how can you write so here is x less than minus k or x greater than k okay yes so they may help while solving the problem okay nice and one more very important thing is so coming to that uh, logarithmic case logarithm of a base b is greater than some number k how to convert into logarithmic form to exponential form of course it will be very easy but one important thing is a greater than a greater than b power k can i write directly without any condition no i cannot write why because here if you want to write like this there must be a condition here the base should be greater than 1 the base should be greater than 1 then only you are able to write a greater than b power k exponential form okay so here a less than b power k is when it is when b is less than 1 the base is less than 1 i mean lies between 0 to 1 in that case you are going to write a less than inequality will change a less than b power k actually these are all called this function is called increasing function and this function is called logarithmic decreasing function like this we are going to get okay right yes very important things so please keep in mind and please practice these solutions you may get that while solving that some problems okay right come on have a look students now we can discuss the domain of this some different functions yes come on the first one is f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 by x minus 2 into x minus 3 what do you see this function is p by q form okay it is rational function yes where it can be defined denominator should be not equals to 0 then only it can be defined am i right or not so what about the denominator x minus 2 into x minus 3 not equals to 0 yes when it becomes 0 first of all please find out when it becomes 0 when x is equal to 2 and when x is equal to 3 the denominator becomes 0 so that's simple thing so i can write the simply the domain is domain is x belongs to all the real numbers minus a set of 2 and 3 right or not so except 2 and 3 it can be defined yes so coming to this one 3 power x by x plus 1 whatever it is it is in the form of p of x by q of x very simple thing yes here also set of all the real numbers okay minus set of minus 1 okay except at x is equals to minus 1 for the remaining values there is no problem simply it can be defined okay yes so whenever we will get that the rational function simply yes the denominator is not equal to 0 then after please find out that the set of values of x 
ok yes so coming to this one what about this the fourth one is the f of x is equal to square root of x minus 3 into x minus 5 square root even root ok and when it can be defined the value under even root ok is never negative ok so if this can be written as x minus 3 into x minus 5 greater than or equals to 0 then only the function can be defined am i right or not ok yes come on so just now i explained this one so product of two factors greater than or equals to 0 though x value does not lie between 3 and 5 simply i can write x less than or equals to 3 or x greater than or equals to 5 so the value does not lie between 3 and 5 less than 3 and greater than 5 that's all these are all the values right in the interval form so which is minus infinity to 3 closed bracket union 5 to infinity yes same like this one more problem f of x is this, evens root ok yes it is a square root of 5 minus x square same like that the process so the value under square root is always greater than or equals to 0 I am right or not? Yes. And this can be written as x square minus 5 is less than or equals to 0. Multiplying with minus, inequality will change. Right? So, this can be written as x plus root 5 into x minus root 5 is less than or equals to 0. Just now I explained. Okay. So, the product of two factors less than or equals to 0, then the value lies between minus root 5 to plus root 5. Okay, so this is the domain of the functions. Okay, not? yes. Let us see. I'll give that one different problem for you. Okay, then we will discuss that problem. So here the functions so associated with the logarithms. So f of x is equals to logarithm of x square minus 4x plus 3, and f of x is equals to 1 by logarithm of 2 minus x. Yes. So what is that condition where the logarithmic function can be defined? The function which is associated with the logarithm. Yes. So, this must be the x square minus 4x plus 3 must be greater than 0. Am I right or not? Okay. Then only this logarithmic function can be defined. This must be positive. Okay. Not. Yes. Then after, so solve for x. So, which can be written as x minus 3 into x minus 1 greater than 0. Yes. Product of two factors greater than 0. So, x value does not lie between 1 and 3. So, x less than 1 and x greater than 3 that is the domain of this particular problem yes coming to this one yes come on 1 by logarithm of where the logarithm is in the denominator so first of all apply the condition when the logarithmic function can be defined this is 2 minus x must be greater than 0 is it right or not the function which is associated with the logarithm must be positive and this logarithm is in the denominator right so this should be not equals to 0 that means this should be not equals to 1 right or not why because so please focus on that where the function can be defined at the same time where the function cannot be defined that is also very important thing yes so when 2 minus x is equals to 1 log 1 becomes 0 1 by 0 it can be not defined that's why that 2 minus x is not equals to 1 right or not this can be defined at this case this cannot be defined that's why we cannot take yes come on so 2 minus x greater than 0 which is x less than 2 2 greater than x, x less than 2 and this is x not equals to 1, very simple thing. So, the values, all the values are which are less than 2, of those we cannot take 1. So, simply I can write x belongs to minus infinity to 2, less than 2, minus minus infinity to, of those we cannot take 1 minus set of 1, okay. That is about this one, yeah. And one more very different function, logarithm of x minus step of x this is a function here like right. yes logarithm of x minus step of x yes what is the domain of this function okay come on yes the same like this please apply the rule where the function can be defined logarithmic function so the function which is associated with the logarithm that must be greater than 0 come on x minus step of x is greater than 0 so x greater than step of x Okay, why because step of x gives integer. So, right, x greater than step of x. For which values of x this condition will be satisfied? Okay, not. So, whenever you will get the condition in terms of step function, please take the check that 
by taking the x values are integers and non integers ok. So, by taking the integers what can you get? Number 5 is greater than step of 5 is obviously it is 5. So, integers are not satisfying non integers ok. So, when x is 5.2 so, this value is 5.2 is greater than step of 5.2. So, 5.2 is greater than integral part of 5.2 is 5 which are satisfying. Which values are satisfying? Non integers are satisfying. So, I can write uh, x belongs to set of all the real numbers minus integers ok at these functions. So, we can define that this particular problem ok next. Oh, yes. So, let us see uh, I am going to explain that these two problems one some different problems f of x is equals to modulus of square root of modulus of x minus x. Yes, rational function where it can be defined I can write like this modulus of x minus x is greater than or equals to 0. So, you know, the value under square root even root that is never negative it is greater than or equals to 0. So, modulus of x is greater than or equals to x. So, for which values of x? So, whenever you will get the modulus. So, please check that the x values are some negative integers, some positive integers and including 0. Come on, take this. So, step of uh, sorry modulus of 0 greater than r equals by taking x is equals 0, it will satisfy. By taking x is negative, it will satisfy. Okay, not. So, here what can you say? For all the real numbers, for all the real numbers, this condition will satisfy. Right and for all the real numbers, come on, you can check that. Okay, yes, so that is the domain of this function. Yes, so coming to this, what it is? So it is first of all, it is in the form of p of x by q of x. Right and so denominator must be not equals to zero. That is your first condition is x not equals to zero. Am I right and x not equals zero? And uh, while observing the numerator, here two terms are there which are in even root. I mean square root. So, what about that one? The square root value is never negative. So, immediately I can write and this 2 minus x is greater than or equals to 0 and 2 plus x also must be greater than or equals to 0. These are all the conditions. Come on, simplify this one. So, this is x minus 2 less than or equals to 0 and here 2 plus x or x plus 2 greater than or equals to 0. So, here x less than or equals to 2 and x greater than or equals to minus 2. Yes, come on. So, write that total conditions x value greater than or equals to minus 2 on the number line this is minus 2 and this is 2 greater than or equals to minus 2 less than or equals to 2 in between them 0 we cannot take. Yes, how can you write that domain of the function x belongs to minus 2 to 0 open interval union open interval 0 to 2 close interval 2. Yes, is it right or not? Minus 2 to plus 2 excluding the value 0. Okay, you can write the interval like this. Yes, students, this is about the problems okay, of the domain of the problems. Just uh, I explained the only some basic questions, some basic questions only in the board examination point of view, you will get this one. Okay, yes, for the next video, I am going to explain that completely the problems based on that M set and the mains level. So, very interesting problems. Okay, not. So, please stay tuned to my channel to get that next upcoming video. So, this uh, continuation problems. Okay, not. So, thank you, thank you for watching. So, be ready for the next video. Until then, bye bye.